Hello everybody, Daniel from Space Dock here, and I'm joined by Alistair. Hello, I'm Alistair. And you may have noticed there's been a new trailer for Star Trek Picard dropped at San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah. And we thought we'd get together and break down our thoughts on it. I've not heard Alistair's thoughts on this just yet, but we've both seen it. And uh, I think we'll we'll just sort of fairly unstructuredly get right into this and start going through the uh, trailer chronologically. But yes. first, of all, first of all, I think I should say there was so much I didn't expect at all in this trailer. Like, uh, this really wasn't what I was expecting, in, in very good ways, I think. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if you agree there. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I feel like they're going to make a big move, really, from a lot of the new stuff they're doing with Discovery to bringing back a lot of, like, old characters that people are familiar with, and they're really going full force with that, which, I don't know, it's it's cool, there's stuff in there I like. So we start off in the vineyard, uh, which is already established as a setting, which we saw from the poster, and I guess he's got a dog as well. Yeah, they confirmed that dog was called Number One. Which is pretty... <laughs> was this some tragic accident that happened to Riker? <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly as useful as Riker ever was. But uh, slightly yeah. less insufferable. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's fun. And the um, So what, what have we got here? He, he goes into the uh, the bedroom and this, he has a look at the, uh, the comm badge. And it's the... Uh, it's the post TNG com badge. It's the films and DS9 com badge. So it's the one that Picard had, which in, makes like, sense, really. First, first contact and Nemesis and stuff, which uh, is pretty cool. That was one of my favorite com badge designs. I wonder if he's just uh, kept uh, everything from all of the generations. Like he's got his first season skin skin tight uniform just lying <laughs> around somewhere that he doesn't fit into anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't fit into it like thirty years ago. That's true. It's uh, a rid- ridiculous uniform for anyone to have to wear. <laughs> But uh, Patrick Stewart is already, like, amazing in this trailer. Like, I can't wait for so much Patrick Stewart in this. Oh, really like, uh, I'm so looking forward to... Because have, have, you, you've seen Logan, right? Um, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. Like, he, he's definitely stepped into this new, like, age of, like, old man acting where he's just kind of, like, more straightforward and, I guess, more believable than, I guess, he was in Star Trek. Um yeah. I don't know, I'm just really looking forward to that. I love Patrick Stewart. Even though even though he's uh, he's looked the same age for 50 years. Yeah, d- he's, defying now, all he's now acting of like an old man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we've got them opening this tray of android parts. Yeah, which, presumably which, the, presumably which would either B4, be right? Data or B4, more likely to be well, no, B4 because Data I, I, I like, it's... was pulverized on the on the scimitar, yes, right? On the scimitar. Uh, well, it also could be law. That's yep, yeah, that's true. So what was the problem yeah. with um before he didn't have like uh, his positronic brain wasn't as sophisticated um well the beef he was the like B4 a prototype like... before lore and data but yeah and then it, and then it was captured by shinzon and mm-hmm. used as like a trojan horse but then they also in the film they try and like cloud back up data onto the before they like transferred some it... of his memories over to him and he was like singing a song that data was doing in the movie well it, it, it looks it, it looks for most of the movie like it hasn't worked like they try and back data up onto him and it looks like it hasn't worked and then at the end after data's died He's singing early Berlin, which is uh, which was what Data was singing at the wedding at the start right. of the film. The implication is that the B four will eventually have like all of Data's personality take over it, but we don't know how long that'll take, and it's been twenty years, so maybe it has or hasn't. I, I don't know. Hmm. Um. So yeah, going ahead a little bit, uh, we start seeing the these the the introduces woman, and there's something happening with these uh these security guards, and they're after her. Um, did you see the the hand blasters that they had, by the way? Oh, where it kind of like unfolds out of the arm. And yeah, like, they kind of look like the, uh, the pistols from Halo. The, you know, the alien ones. The oh, the, yeah, the, uh, the the plasma pistols. Yeah, yeah, and I guess they're just sticking with like pulsed energy weapons now instead of beams. That's just what Star Trek is now. I'm kind of okay with that. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It also, I mean, I know that like. Uh, it makes less sense as an energy weapon, but it also is easier to write drama around when you have, like, projectiles that can be dodged and, like, uh, sort of lag and, and things like that. Like, it yeah. looks more cinematic. It also and, kind of uh, feels a bit it, more weighty. I mean, we had it with the Defiant, yeah. right? It had, like, pulse yeah, yeah, energy. Yeah. Phased pulse cannons. So the, we don't find out in the trailer who this woman is. She's no. obviously, like, the, the MacGuffin of the series. But Evil Daft um, Punk is after the... So <laughs> Yes. I've seen it suggested that she's, like... The sequel to Lal, you know, Data's daughter. Oh, right. That's interesting. Yeah. But, um, okay, so we go we go on now to uh, Picard approaching what is presumably uh, Starfleet Academy or Starfleet Headquarters mm-hmm. in uh, San Francisco. 
Uh, we can see a few of the new Starfleet uniforms on the right there. It looks like they've got the um, the All Good Things Alternate Future Com badges, which is pretty cool. Um, other than that, it's like a very slight expansion on the Voyager uniforms. They don't seem to have kept the Dominion, Dominion War grey top uniforms, which I think is a shame because I really liked those yeah, ones. Yeah, you do like those. But uh, yeah, I get it. The uh, it's like Star Trek. You've got to have the Crayola uniforms, so they've uh, they've gone ahead and done that. And we got we got um, this scene now where uh, Picard's in this admiral's office. I don't think that's an admiral we know. Um, it's a it looks like a new admiral. Uh, there's also a nice you can see in the background the the new Elcar's com panels are of a nice color scheme. I quite like those. Um, and here he's discussing that he's found this girl uh, again, more sort of vague. Um, pronoun game illusions without any extra information. Okay, so later on in the trailer a bit, we've got these uh, ships approaching some kind of red planet. Looks kind of like Mars. And uh, so these are probably Romulan ships, right? Like, uh, they've uh, definitely got this... that bird of prey aesthetic, right? The, the, the yeah. wide wings and um, and such. I, I assumed they were going to be Klingon or Romulan. But... Mm, well, most Klingon designs are just stolen Romulan designs. Oh, that's true. So that's... <laughs> But the the uh, we know that quite a lot of the plot of this show is about the Romulans, or at least like that's what they were pushing until they suddenly revealed the Borg. So uh, I don't know whether they're going to be competing for screen time there. But the the, the post like Star Empire Romulans, whatever has happened now that Romulus was eaten by a supernova, is going to be part of the story here. Mm. So I guess we might see some Romulan warbird action at some point in this series. These are pretty cool designs overall. I like them. Yeah, I like them. They, I like, they, 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 I like they, the they tapering pretty... wings. Uh, well, min- minimalistic, I guess? Yeah, yeah. They look fast, kind of like small raider ships. I don't know whether we'll see any larger Romulan warbirds at all in the series, but these are, these are cool designs. Mm. Uh, so moving on, we've got somebody being analysed by like Romulan medical holographic stuff. Do you think all these guys in the black that they've got, analysing him there, and the black guys that were after the woman could be anything to do with Section 31? Uh, possibly. They. Uh, I can't make out that badge that the guy by the door is wearing. It kind of looks like the Psycor badge from uh, Babylon 5. Oh, right. But they're, they're, all, uh, they're all wearing masks, and like uh, all, later on in the, in, the episode, in the trailer, we see some signs about assimilation that I'll, that I'll, that I'll point out. Yeah, but, I, I saw that as well. So just, just we'll go to, the, the first of all, the Captain Picard Day banner, which apparently yeah, someone's yeah. kept. <laughs> Someone kept that. I mean, top top marks, good on you. The uh, that, that that's uh, something that's that's worth keeping. Yeah. I'm wondering if that's just going to be on the ship that he's living on for the entire <laughs> <laughs> series. Every day but, yeah, is that... Captain Picard Day. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a cool little uh, feature. I wonder if uh, I wonder if any of the characters will be like adult versions of one of those kids or something. Oh yeah, from presumably. The, uh, from the Picard Day thing. That, that would Wouldn't be great cool. if we saw one of the kids that was in um, what was that episode Disaster when he's just like well, stuck in the ex- executive officer in charge of radishes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna gonna make an epic return. Grows up to be like a botanist or something. <laughs> oh, anyway, weird. so uh, we cut to like it looks like some kind of prison facility. Oh um, yeah, and it's got the little sign there that says what well, the facility has gone five thousand eight hundred and forty three days without assimilation. Yes, which is the, fir- is the first hint in the trailer of like the Borg, right? Yeah, yeah. It looks like so. These are Romulan guards, right? They look like Romulans, and they have Romulan-looking rifles. Well, they've certainly and got the, the haircuts. Uh, I'm assuming that that other version of the sign is in Rahanasu or whatever it's called, the Romulan script. Mm. That's uh, and they look like Borg alcoves behind them in the wall. They look like uh, regeneration alcoves. Oh yeah. Do you think it's like a um a commandeered Borg ship that they're supposed to be on? Maybe, or uh, it could be like. Yeah, I can, I can imagine that this is kind of like Cerberus messing with Reaper derelicts in Mass Effect. Like, they've just stuck all this stuff to it and started poking things. Do you think it's possible and, uh, that's stuff. what we see in, to cut ahead a little bit, the trailer later when we see the big blue ball cube? Uh, that's possibly, like, now that we know it's meant to be more about the Romulans, it's like a Romulan um, commandeered ball ship that we see. That would be interesting. And I think that was stuff that happened in Star Trek Online quite a lot. Where it was mm. like, oh, the, the Romulans are messing with Borg technology. And everybody's like, that's really not a good idea, guys. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't do that. <laughs> but yeah, that, uh, that'd be worth checking out. And it can certainly, it's certainly plausible how like Romulans, after their planet got blown up, would be like willing to do all kinds of crazy, unethical stuff to get back ahead yeah. or whatever. I mean, they've always been pretty dodgy, the Romulans. I think they are the f- faction that would have the least qualms about using Borg technology to uh, their own agenda. Um, moving on, we've got these like prison jumpsuits. Everyone's in these red prison jumpsuits. Um, there's a lot of humans here. 
possibly we're looking at like, I don't know, some kind of Federation ship got captured. If this is a Romulan facility, I'm not ruling out the idea that this might be some kind of Federation Romulan collaboration or the Federation is doing something dodgy because they do do dodgy stuff every now and then. Maybe they're all competing over like leftover Borg technology or something. Yeah, it's like a technological race over over Borg stuff. I wonder if like I wonder if we'll get direct interaction with the actual Borg collective in this, or if it's just like people fighting over bits of Borg stuff. I I thing. would quite like that as a as a plot point. It's like the uh, the proto molecule in the expanse. Yeah, where exactly. It's, it's, it's more it's more influential because it's like it's just the leftover bits that people do, and it's like human fallibility uh, as they fight over this, mm. rather than it just being like here comes the aliens fight the aliens. Yeah. Uh, so moving forwards a bit, we got Picard talking to a woman who is either Romulan or has extremely dramatic eyebrows. I like these, uh, we get this look at like public transport arches on, on this street on Earth. Like there's people just wandering in and out of transport rooms in the uh, in the back of the shot as Picard's standing outside Starfleet headquarters. Yeah, we never really see how that's incorporated in like day-to-day life on Earth or like colonies or stuff. But like t- transporting just seems to be something that's exclusively used for ships or, like up until now. But. There's a there's a bit in DS9 where Cisco says that like when he was in the academy he went back to his family's living room for dinner every evening and they used their entire transporter ration oh, for the cool. month or something. Transporter so I guess uh, ration. yeah, so I guess everybody has like an energy ration for tra- for using transporters weekly or something. A future without scarcity. <laughs> yes, I don't know who uh, this bearded character is. I know one of these characters is Hugh the Borg drone from iBorg. That's been confirmed. I don't know which one it is. Anyway, uh, we have a Romulan character with a sword on his back uh, talking to Picard here. What, I wonder what this ship is. They seem to have a ship, but we never see it from the outside. We see the bridge quite a few times, and it's like a long kind of runabout type thing. I wonder if it's one of those Romulan ships or something. Oh, maybe. Okay, so moving forwards a bit here, we get another character, or another two characters who are presumably part of the main crew cast. Uh, maybe this is Hugh? This younger looking bloke with the beard? Uh, this is an interesting interior design here. Again, I think this is probably a Romulan ship. Um, and this is when we get all of the very intense foreshadowing about MacGuffin Woman being like the harbinger of death or mm. whatever. And this is when the trailer went from, oh, this is kind of interesting, to what the hell is going on for, for me? <laughs> so, <laughs> as we just smash cut to a Borg cube out of nowhere. Um, I thought the Borg would be like a season two thing for this show. Oh, um, do you know what it is with the with the blue on the on the ball cube? It's it's, it's like hollow. Like yeah, it's, it's gap, hollow. It's right? a damaged ball cube. So I guess that would all just be like a shield or something to to maintain the the pressure and atmosphere inside, right? Maybe, yeah. Or or they're building it. It oh, could maybe. be building building it to specifications or something. Like this cube looks like. Uh, I don't know whether it's just because they've, they've they'll have visually up, up, updated the uh, design of the cubes, but it's like the bottom right of it is like a step down section. Like the whole bottom right quarter is like a little lower by a step than the rest of the ship. And I think that's just a of, stylistic choice. Yeah, like uh, that's just a, a, a change in how Borg cubes look, maybe. But either way, um, I, I wasn't expecting the Borg at all in Star Trek Picard's first season. I thought it was just all going to be like Picard doing ambassador stuff with the Romulans and things but i guess like if you're gonna do a picard show like bringing him back there's any anything you did do that wasn't the borg would be not as intense as the borg because they are the <laughs> picard antagonist right like that's yeah, that's yeah. their that's that's his uh, nemesis whatever star trek 10 tried to tell you it's uh, it's the borg so i'm very interested to see what what happens here and whether we'll get like an actual borg collective appearance or just uh, the salvaging of borg stuff and then as if that wasn't like surprising enough Suddenly, Seven of Nine seven turns of up. Nine appears, yeah. Like, if you'd asked me, like, who I expected to see in this trailer, the last person I would have said would be Seven of Nine. That's um, that's pretty crazy. But I guess uh, a sensible person to have involved if you're going to tell a story about the Borg in a post Voyager world, because mm. she's probably probably Starfleet's foremost expert on the Borg at this point. I mean, most of the crew would like as well, right? We we saw at the end of um, Voyager, Janeway's giving like talks about the Borg and whatnot, uh, teaching them in like classes and universities. Yeah, it'd be cool to see Janeway back. Like Janeway and Seven were the best parts of Voyager by by a long way. They oh, deserve I, a better show. I feel like there are going to be tons of cameos of the various cast appearing throughout the show. I'd love that. I'd love some DS9 people to show up. It would, like, make my day if, uh, if some DS9 people showed up. I would quite like to see Jonathan Frakes as well. Oh, oh I, I think we've con- I think that's been confirmed. We're getting, okay, great. Uh, 
we're getting Troy and Riker. So probably the Titan is going to show up, the USS Titan. Oh, sweet. And uh, I wonder if they'll if the USS Titan will look like it did in the books, because there's already an existing design for the USS Titan. And I don't know whether they'll, they'll keep it or replace it. But either way, uh, Seven of Nine is clearly, like, fully human at this point. She's, like, bantering and sort of casual, and she's lost all of that, like, roboticism. So I guess she's completely, like, recovered from her assimilation by now, mm. which is pretty cool. And she's Still kind got the of... snazzy eyepiece, though. Yeah, I think it was established in Voyager that it would, like, kill her if they removed that. Like, oh, there's, um, they've re- they removed, like, all of the Borg components apart from the stuff that, that can't be removed without killing her. So there's still, like, a thing on her hand as well and stuff that, uh, that's, like, I don't know, connected to a neural net or whatever. So they can't mess with it. Uh, but either way, it's, like, this is the first time these characters have ever interacted. Like, this is a Voyager TNG crossover, like, 20 years after the <laughs> both shows ended. Okay, so moving forward, we get, um... Another nice bridge shot of this big long thing with uh, some sort of orange holographic displays and a big kind of honeycomb circular thing at the back. Like this is this is probably our main cast, right? Like uh, these five people, like the crew of whatever this is, is uh, is what we're going to be going through it with. I like. I don't know. There's something fun about the fact that it's like old Picard just hanging around with this like young cast of, of new characters. <laughs> I love he's in the back like, as well on the bridge. So yeah, he's like, he's like a supervising in the corner to just go and look. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but it's going to be great. I'm sure he'll be like rolling out all the wisdom nonstop, which would be good. Hmm. Um, and then we cut to like, this is pro- presumably a Borg drone, right? Being examined on a table here. Well, I guess it goes to show that they're still around, right? Or at least uh, if we... Or at least we can... they could have found a drone on that on that wreck, maybe, or something. I yeah. Or if we go on to this, uh, but they're playing around with the technology conspiracy theory. They're kind of trying to make their own or do something. Although a piece is definitely being removed, so... Yeah, maybe. Or oh, they want to remove the tech so they can look at it. I don't know. I'm st- strongly suspecting either Tal Shiar or Section 31 shenanigans happening yeah. uh, with, with Borg stuff. Uh, so then we get a few more quickly edited shots of MacGuffin Woman and some other stuff. And then we get this nice after the title card bit. Yeah, where... well, we see Brent Spiner as Data again. Yeah, or, has, he been C- has he been CGI'd a bit to, to uh, de-age him? I, it looks like pretty heavy makeup. Like, it's not just makeup they've applied, but it's like a mask that he's got on to make sure he looks the same way as he did before. But um, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Looks fine. I, 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 I'm excited to see more yeah, Brent Spiner and Patrick Stewart dating. Oh, absolutely. Picard. Absolutely. But, uh, it seems like, at least from what this trailer implies in this interaction here, that it's just going to be... He, he's not going to be like a prominent stay on character he's not gonna like be with the i adventures. i feel like this is a holodeck like uh he, oh, says he doesn't want the game doesn't want the game to end and all that and like uh either they've rebuilt the b4 mm-hmm. and and he's like got all his memories back or like picard is trying to help him return his memories by doing familiar things with him like playing cards or whatever yeah or or picard is just playing cards with data on the holodeck which seems possible to camera me. pans around and you've got isaac newton and, and albert and einstein stephen hawking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stephen hawking's yeah i i I don't think we're going to be getting like data all the time in this, um, which is fine. I mean, it could oh, be a yeah. season, it could be a season two thing. But either way, um, like it's it's interesting that he's prominent here. Also, this confirms because a lot of people like in in the Star Trek Countdown comics, the B four replaces Data within like a week, and then he becomes captain of the Enterprise. So like we we know that in this version, um, Data is has not been like fine and functioning for twenty years. Like, whatever his recovery is, it's happening around now, if there is any. Yeah. So, uh, that, that's interesting. I wonder what's happened to the Enterprise. Is the Enterprise E still in service? It's been 20 years since it's commissioning. Well, and, they're not uh, very quick at rolling out, like, new ships and phasing out old ones. No, if we see a friggin' Miranda class... We see Miranda class, class, class yes! Yeah, <laughs> make it happen! <laughs> <laughs> Trundling around with a cloud of black smoke billowing out the back of it as it continues <laughs> to try and defend the Federation. They're like, now cold 70 years after it came out. Uh, yeah, the, so I don't know. Is there an Enterprise in service? We we don't really know. That's uh, the kind of I, thing they I, could reveal at the end of the whole season, right? Yeah, like, not tell yeah. You. They've got like a new class of ship. They've got as the new Enterprise, which is the flagship or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah. Or maybe, imagine they've still got uh, sovereign classes, sovereign classes uh, dittering about. But yeah, that was the Picard trailer. Yeah, exciting stuff. I mean, I'm like far more excited. I mean, I was already quite excited before this, but I'm really excited now. Like, this this was a really good trailer, I thought, and I'm, like, the the fact that there are Borg stuff involved. I've, I've wanted for ages to see the Borg done with modern effects and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And, like, they are just the best villains in Star Trek. Like, the best villains in TV sci-fi, probably. They're just really fantastic antagonists. 
It's such a great presence be... on screen and such a like an intimidating, you know, aura. Really, they really, really do. And yeah. like, yeah, I, I can't wait to see to see this. Um, so it's going to be what December? Oh no, early early twenty twenty. We've uh, we've not got early a, 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 okay. a fixed release date. I'm mixing it up with the Expanse one, but early twenty twenty, we're getting Star Trek Picard. And uh, I'm I'm very very much ready for that. There's going to be a lot of space dot coverage, I think, when that comes around. <laughs> I was going to say I'm excited to see all the um all the old cast like back at it again, and and how they're all going to act and interact with each other. Uh, you know, years down the line, just just exciting to to see that again. It is, yeah. It's like shameless nostalgia pandering, yeah, but I also it really, want it. it really is. <laughs> <laughs> no. And yeah, if anybody from DS9 shows up, I'm going to completely freak out. It would be uh, it would be fantastic. Like. So thanks for watching, everyone. Yep, thank you for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video. This is Daniel and Alistair from Space Dock, signing off. See you later. Thank you for watching Space Dock. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please do check out the links on the screen right now or in the description below for our Patreon and channel membership services. Anything you can pledge goes towards improving our team and our equipment and allowing us to put together bigger and more exciting video projects for you guys on the channel.